By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against patron of the show, Jeff. Jeff, welcome back to the channel. And he has brought a black and red deck to the table called Shattered Dreams. And he's taking on my red and green deck called The Untamed Wilds. Because guess what? I'm playing with, yes, four Untamed Wilds. I think that card is so underestimated. So hopefully today in this match, I can show you the power of the Untamed Wilds. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. First, a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for one Trading. 3 for one Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Jeff. Let's take a look at his deck, Shattered Dreams. And here we see the deck of Jeff, Shattered Dreams. So as you can see, it is black and it's red. And maybe a cool thing to note here, uh, th these decks were played in a, an event that we called the Allied Colors Tournament. And in the Allied Colors Tournament, everybody played with two colors that were allies of each other. And you also had to have an even split. So you need to play with the same amount of, uh, you know, in this case, black as red cards. So they had to be a 50-50 split. And I think the result of this tournament is pretty cool. And the artifacts, by the way, were re restricted. So it's quite rare to see artifacts here and you can only play it uh, eight artifacts max. Anyway, if you want to know more about this crazy rule set, check out the, uh, the description below. And just in case you don't know, um, the way it, it works with the allied colors, how you can know which colors are allies of, of what other color, uh, you can just check the back of your magic card. So here you see it, the back of a magic card. So for example, if you're playing with blue, then the friends of blue are the uh, colors directly to the right and the left. So in this case, white and black. So they're the allies. The colors that are further away are the enemy colors. So in this case, the enemy colors of blue are green and red. Now, uh, Jeff is playing with uh, red, so the Allied colors of red or green and black, so he's chosen to go with black. And then when we go and look at the deck of Jeff, the actual cards in the deck, we see multiple themes. The first thing I notice is that it's creatureless. So he's got a single abyss and he's not playing with any creatures. Um, That's probably the reason why he's playing with a lot of burn, so he can just kill all the creatures on site. He's playing four chain lightnings, four lightning bolts, and two drain lives. So there's part of the strategy is just to burn your opponent or of course use all that burn to remove the creatures of your opponent. And then he's also playing with land destruction. He's playing with four sinkholes and four stone rains. And of course that land destruction strategy works really well with Dingus Egg. Dingus Egg is an artifact that reads every time a land gets destroyed, the controller of the land takes two damage. So for example, if it would stone rain one of my lands, I lose a land, but when Dingus Egg is out, I also take two points of damage. So that's pretty devastating. To be honest, this deck is looking pretty good. Um, and then of course he's playing with, with uh, four Underworld Dreams. Underworld Dreams and Enchantment uh, that reads every time your opponent draws a card, he also takes a damage. So, I mean, it's looking like a pretty killer deck, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Um, talking about that, let's take a look at my deck, The Untamed Wilds. And here we see my deck, The Untamed Wilds. So as you can see, it's also a 50-50 split, right? I'm playing with the exact same amount of red cards as I am playing with green cards. So that's pretty cool. And what I really wanted to do uh, with this build was play with Untamed Wilds and Sylvan Library because I'm just a big fan of that synergy. So in case you don't know, um, Untamed Wilds is a sorcery from Legends for one green and two that reads, you know, when you play it, you can look up target basic land out of your library, put it into the game untapped and then shuffle your library. And the shuffling is really important with this synergy because Sylvan Library is an enchantment for one green and one that allows you to look at the top three cards of your library, put them in any, um, in any order and then put them back on top and draw your card for turn. You do this during your draw phase, by the way. And Sylvan also gives you the ability to draw an extra card and you can draw two extra cards max, but you have to pay four life every time you do it. So you can pay eight life to draw three cards, which is pretty nice, but you cannot do that too often. 
And what often happens with Sylvan, and people who play with it know that, is that at a certain point in the game, you can no longer pay the life. You already know what cards are on top, and the Sylvan kind of gets annoying that way, right? But what if you could just reshuffle your library, look at three new cards every single time? Well, with this combo, you cannot do it every single time, but at least whenever you play your Untamed Wilds, you get to shuffle your library so that next turn, you get to look at a, a, a fresh pair of new cards. And what you really wanna do with this deck, what you're hoping to achieve is that you're ramping up with Birds of Paradise and Untamed Wilds, and you're holding your opponent back by playing Stone Rain and Fishers. You know, we've got three Stone Rains and a single Fisher in this deck. So that's kind of what you're hoping for. And because you get the tempo advantage, you're probably gonna be able to play maybe a turn two or turn three Dragon Whelp, a turn, you know, four or turn five Sheevan Dragon or Crow Worm. So you just have your big creatures to put that pressure on. And that of course combined with uh, the Lightning Bolts to perhaps remove the Mana Dorks of your opponent. So you really wanna make sure that your opponent is going slow and that you're going faster. That's kind of like the, the jest of the deck, right? That's that's what I'm hoping to do. And of course, I'm hoping to cast a Crow Worm. That is actually really the dream of this deck. Crow Worm Berserk, that would be really cool. And of course, show you that Untamed Wilds is a really, really good card. So hopefully I get to show that in this match. Talking about that, uh, we looked at the deck of Jeff. We looked at my deck. So let's go, right? Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play, starting with a mountain. So I'm playing a red and green deck called the Untamed Wilds, because guess what? I'm playing with four Untamed Wilds in this deck. And I'm taking on Jeff, and he's playing a deck called Shattered Dreams. It's red and black. It's got direct damage, land destruction, and also underworld dreams in it. So pretty strong deck. Starting here with a dark ritual into, yep, there it is. Underworld dreams, the powerful enchantment from Legends. That means I start taking damage straight away. Gonna drop to 19 here, taking my second turn. Let's see what I can do. Maybe finding a Birds of Paradise, playing a Forest first. Am I gonna tap it? No, I'm not, just passing the turn. So Jeff taking on his second turn. And his deck is creatureless, by the way. So he's not playing with any creatures, at least not in the main. I believe he's got Hypnotic Specters in the sideboard. So really hoping to win with direct damage and land destruction in combination with Dingus Egg and of course a damage dealt by the Underworld Dreams. There's another Dark Ritual, no second land. Gonna go for Demonic Tutor here. So I wonder if maybe he had like an opening hand with Underworld Dreams, two Rituals, a Demonic and just one land. And he kept it because of that. That would kind of make in a way sense also because you're on the draw. It looks like he's uh, kind of walking away here. Is he giving up or? Uh, okay, he's back. I'm like, that's quick. I wonder if he's just gonna look up a dual land, like Badlands or something. I wouldn't be surprised. He has, of course, still a mana floating, maybe in a Soul Ring. Okay, so gonna go for, for a Badland. So I guess he just looked up uh, a land then. Is he gonna play, for example, a Sinkhole here? Yep, there's the Sinkhole. What is he gonna destroy? Gonna go for the Mountain and pass turn. So, I mean, this is a pretty good start for Ragnar here. There's a strip mine for me, and of course I'm going to strip here the uh, the land, because I really feel that that's the one that he looked up with the uh, Demonic Tutor, meaning he's got uh, mana issues. So then, of course, I'm going to strip mine the, uh, the Badlands. Quite lucky with the strip mine here. I wonder if it was a top deck. Look at that Jeff just passing the turn, not doing anything. And I'm finding a green. Now, the thing with Underworld Dreams is, by the way, that it makes my um, Sylvan Library really, really bad. Luckily for me, Sylvan is a May Claw, so you don't have to look at the top three cards. Tapping three here, by the way. Hey, there's the Untamed Wilds, yeah. So I'm ramping up. Hopefully that means that next turn I can play maybe a two-headed giant or another five drop or maybe a Dragon Whelp. That would be quite nice. Like my deck is not really having the speed that I usually wanted to have. And look at this, by the way, Jeff already passed his turn. I'm on 15. Let's see what I can do, playing another forest. Gonna tap four, or we're gonna see a Dragon Whelp here. Yep, Dragon Whelp hitting the board, a two, three flyer, and you can pay a red to give a plus one, plus oh. And you can do this three times, make it a 5-3, and if you uh, put more in it, you kind of blow up your own Dragon Well because it's destroyed at the end of the turn. And look at my life total, by the way. I'm already on 14. All that damage dealt by a single Underworld Dream, so that's really doing work. The problem for uh, Jeff, though, is he's not finding any more lands. 
And I can now, of course, hit him for five if I choose to pump up my whelp. Let's see what I'm going to do. Looks like I'm not, though. Going to tap out in my second main. Oh, Shivan Dragon! Yeah, this is a big problem for Jeff. He really needs to find lands now. So he had that strong opener, but hasn't been able to find any lands after that. And, of course, my uh, strip mine was very unfortunate for Jeff taking care of the bad lands. So now I've got a Shivan and... A Dragon Whelp. I can hit him for 10 here, putting Jeff on 8. I'm on 13 at the moment, by the way. Three cards in hand. Yeah, this is really bad news for Jeff. Tapping three, another Untamed Wilds. Probably going to look up a mountain. It's nice to see uh, the Untamed Wilds being played out already in the first game. So shuffling up my library here. And yeah, going to swing in. Look at that, gonna deal 11 points of damage. Wow, the dragons are really raging here. And yeah, Jeff has one last turn, and I think it's done. He is finding finally another land. Looks like a swamp. It's kind of hard to see. But yeah, I think this is it for game number one. And gonna untap here, and yeah... Jeff already picking up the cards. Of course, I want to have my, my winning attack here. Uh, but remember, it's just game one. So now, uh, now both of us are going to dive into our sideboards. And we will catch back up with you in game uh, number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's, of course, Jeff on the play after losing that first one. Let's see if he can find some lands. There's a swamp. Passing a turn to me. Let's see what I can do. Forest and a Birds of Paradise. This is what my deck wants to do. Ideally, I'm going to find uh, an Untamed Wilds next turn, ramping up double. But uh, let's see. First, Ragnar here finding a City of Brass. Is he going to cast something? Going to tap two black, it seems. Yep, there's a Sinkhole. And of course, he's going to take a damage from his own City of Brass. But yeah, this could be bad news for me. Losing at that forest. Let's see what I can do. Okay, there's a Mountain. Going to tap both. And going to cast a Sylvan Library. Yeah, I think the Sylvan is really important because let's say Rachner now bolts my bird. Bolt the bird, right? Then at least I've, uh, I've got the Sylvan to find more green mana. And here we see a Mountain by Rachner. So Rachner really finding the lands here in this uh, second game. That's good for him. There's a Chain Lightning. Yeah, there we go, right? Chain the bird! You know with birds, they usually don't live long. So I'm happy that I was able to at least get a mana out of it. Now I can look at the top three cards with my Sylvan. So we already have like a completely different game here than we had in game one. And of course, I'm happy that Ragnar is not finding uh, his Underworld Dream so early as he did in that first game. Going to take an extra card, going to go to 16. Just a mountain though, so no green source. So that means that half my deck is now unplayable. That's not great, of course. And Ragnar again finding more lands. There's a strip mine. Not going to use it though. Going to tap it for mana instead. So he is going to use it, I guess. Oh, it looks like he's changing his mind. Untapping again. So for a moment there, I thought it was just going to tap four. Which makes me wonder, thinking about his deck, what could he have for four? Maybe a Dingus Egg. I think Dingus Egg is a casting cost of four. Would be really cool to see Dingus Egg in action, by the way. Untapping again. So Ragnar really kind of in doubt. Passing the turn here back to me. Not doing anything. Okay, that's very suspicious. I'm going to look at my top three cards again. And I mean, my deck kind of needs four lands to get going, right? Okay, there we see a mountain. Going to tap three red. Oh, there's a stone rain. Okay, so going to play a stone rain. Probably on, well, would you go for City of Brass? Yeah, I'm going for City. The thing is with City, it does damage the opponent every time he uses it. So that kind of feels nice as well. But I guess... Uh, I guess two black also is a thing, of course, in Ragnar's deck. So I want to make sure he doesn't have two black. But Ragnar still has three lands. Could consider, of course, using the strip. But maybe he's waiting for me to, uh, to play a forest. Moving around the chair here, thinking about his options. It looks like he doesn't have a, a land number four, else he would have played it. Look at that, just passing the turn. Okay, so maybe stone raining this city was pretty important here to kind of slow Ragnar down. Finding a strip mine. Wow, I'm going to 
destroy more lands here again finding that strip remember in game one that was pretty decisive as well as well when i took care of the badlands gonna go for the mountain this surprises me a little bit because usually when you play against people who also play with black black is really a color you have to commit to so when you have to choose between two colors to kind of destroy the lands i usually go for black so surprised that i'm going here for red perhaps i'm worried about his direct damage and hoping that he doesn't have any more red mana and i can now for example play birds of paradise if it can find a green source finding a, a taiga here by the way Ooh, into untamed wilds yeah so now i'm gonna ramp up gonna find a forest and it looks like ragnar again is in trouble right really struggling with dealing uh, with the land removal that i've played in game one and now again in game two and ragnar having five cards look looks like he's just gonna pass he has six in hand now yeah, this is great news for me because now I can I can ramp up again. I can start playing big creatures like Crawworm, like Sheevan Dragon, like Two-Headed Giant. So just going to untap, upkeep, look at the top three cards with the Sylvan. And let's see what I can find. I mean, it's still of 16 life. I could consider like taking four good to 12. Look at that. I am doing it. Going to go to 12. Going to tap three red here. Another stone rain. Oh, man. This is so tough for Jeff. I feel for you, man. You're already like low on lands. You're waiting to draw into lands. So you can finally do something. And then you have to deal with a stone rain. Yeah, this is looking really, really bad for Jeff. Oh, card from the, from the sideboard. Um, what's it called again? What it, I know what it does. It's an enchantment. I can pay two red. Then it counter started black spell. Yeah, this is a really big problem for uh, for Jeff. He doesn't have any black mana anyway. He only has that single strip mine. He's in a really bad position. I'm going to tap four here. And there's a Dragon Whelp. Yeah, changing my mind because, of course, I want to keep two green open for Life Force. That's the name, Life Force of the enchantment. And that Dragon Whelp now hitting the board. Yeah, it's looking really bad for Jeff. Discarding a Shatter here, passing the turn back to me. And I can, of course, swing in here for five, or maybe I have better options. Who knows? Maybe I've got a Sheevan in hand or a Crawl Worm. That would be really cool. Or, uh, or Gerard of the Closed Fist. I'm also playing with him, attacking here for five. So I guess I don't have any other options. Going to swing in. So Ragnar's going to drop to 14. And then I'm going to play a Taiga. And let's see what else I can do. It looks like I'm just passing the turn. But it's going to be really hard for Dachner to get back from this. Oh, discarding a Dingus Egg. That is really bad. I would have loved to see that Dingus Egg, Jeff, actually. Another card you don't see often, so I would have loved to see that card in action. A card that works really well together with Armageddon, by the way. Yeah, there's nothing Jeff can really do here, just not finding the lance. Um, the good news is here, by the way, don't uh, click away because we also played a third game. There is a Sheevan. Wow, this is just like game one where I had Sheevan and Dragon Whelp completely destroying uh, Jeff. Now, Jeff is finding a swamp. So that is something, at least for him. Maybe he's got a terror from the side. He can take care of the Sheevan that would extend his life at least one more turn. Then again... I would play it out now because if he doesn't, I have the life force to counter it away. So I'm going to untap upkeep, attack here, pointing out that I've got the life force to counter any terror that he may have. And I think that's it. Let's see. Yep, that's it. Tidying up here. Yep. So Jeff losing a game number two. And that means I'm winning the match. But like I said, don't go away because we played game three. And I can already tell you in game three, Ragnar found all the lands that he needs. So um, yeah, check out game three. It's going to be fun. Game number three, the bonus game. Jeff starting here with a swamp. And I've got a forest. No birds though for me. Passing a turn back to Jeff, finding swamp number two. Are we going to see a sinkhole again? Yep, there's the sinkhole. I mean, that part of the plan has been working quite well for Jeff. I believe he played sinkholes in every single game. 
Question, of course, is can he again like follow it up? Can he find enough lands? And what am I doing? Finding another forest, gonna tap for a green. There's a soul ring. So I'm kind of, you know, ramping up again, not really having any issues with manas in, uh, in all these uh, games so far. Ragnar, of course, is playing with shatters. So we could see red and then a shatter. There's a Badlands, gonna tap three. Ooh, Underworld Dreams. And that card is really annoying for two reasons. Just because it hurts me every time I draw, but also it shuts down my Sylvan Library, which is pretty annoying because I really want to use my Sylvan Untamed Wilds. Gonna tap two here. Finding a Taiga there. Oh, there is a Sylvan. So now the question is, am I going to use it? So remember, it is a May ability. But if I use it, I take two points of extra damage, right? Because I draw three cards to take three damage. Even though you put them back on the library, you do draw them. So you do take that two points of extra damage. Anyway, here we see uh, Jeff playing another uh, land, a mountain. There's a sinkhole, so he's really kind of finding the lands he needs, slowing me down with his land destruction. Taiga gone now. And now I have the option, untap, upkeep, draw step. So I have the option to look at the top three or not. I am going to do it. Oh, man, taking a lightning bolt here. Yeah, Underworld Dreams, I, I can foresee this could be an issue. Hopefully I boarded in my Tranquilities. Got two in the sideboard, finding a mountain. Going to tap three. Okay, there's an Untamed Wilds. So now we see that Synergy Sylvan Library with Untamed Wilds. Probably going to look up a second red. Oh, going to go for green. So I wonder if that means that I've got a Cockatrice or a Thicket Basilisk in hand. And the reason I was thinking about red is because of Dragon Whelp, of course, being two red and two to cast. But now I've got uh, five mana, which is a pretty good number for my deck. So I'm expecting some creatures from my side next turn. Let's see what uh, Jeff can do. So Jeff tapping three. Are we going to see a stone rain? Oh, there's a stone rain. Yeah. Man, he's really successful in this third game to really slow me down. He's played two singles and a stone rain so far. And of course, that uh, Underworld Dreams is huge for Jeff. It's such a disadvantage. Look at that again. Going to look at the top three. So another lightning bolt. I mean, I understand that I'm doing it, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, is this the right decision? Going to play a Birds of Paradise passing the turn. Oh, there's a quick bolt, though. Bolt the bird. Yeah, this is really tough. Jeff being really successful here in making sure I don't get too much uh, mana. There's a Mishra's Factory, so that can start uh, dealing damage next turn. Going to untap. Am I going to? Nope, just going to take a damage here. Going to go to 12. And I think a problem for me here is at least I've got five. Now. I need to play a creature, maybe Cockatrice, Thicket. No, I'm not just passing the turn. This is really bad. Jeff finding another land. Three swamps so far. Animating, attacking for two. Tap a green. Oh, I'm going to play a Berserk on it. Okay. Pretty drastic measures here. But I also know that Ragnar is not playing with a lot of creatures. So I'm like, okay, if I can destroy the little creature threats that he has. You know, that probably has a big impact. And of course, I'm destroying a land at the same time. Finding a tiger here. It looks like Jeff has a question about the factory. But um, yeah, it does die. Even though it's a land, it's a creature. So it's animated as a creature. And then if it attacked that turn, it's uh, destroyed. So playing my tiger, got two cards in hand, seven life, quite low. And that's, of course, because I took two lightning bolts, basically, but because I used my Sylvan Library twice. And, of course, I played the Berserk. So that alone is 10 damage. And that's the thing with Untamed Wilds. It keeps adding up every single turn. You have to take uh, your damage from drawing your cards. There's a Shatter on the Soul Ring. Oh, this could be the nail in the coffin. Kind of that Shatter kind of gave me the feeling that I had a chance. You know, if I could find a good creature, I could just play it out because I had the Soul Ring mana. But... Yeah, it's not really working out here for me. Finding a Birds of Paradise, only one card left in hand. Jeff here tapping two black. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. I wonder if he's going to flip. I mean, he could consider flipping on the Taiga. Because double red in my deck is kind of uh, kind of handy. It's, it's a thing, you know, with, with Shivan Dragon, with a uh, playset of Dragon Whelps. So he is going to flip. 
And I know that that Jeff, you don't have this this chaos orb for long, right? I think this is uh, maybe one of the first matches that you're using it, flipping it quite well here, hitting my uh, Birds of Paradise. I think maybe I would have gone for the Taiga because the birds you can also like just burn. Then again, I mean you have a lot of land destruction as well, so I don't know what the right way is. Finally, having two red, look at that. So I, I'm sure that Dragon Ball must have been in my hand forever. I just couldn't get to two red. And Jeff really did a good job. I'm on five, so... But I can start hitting now for a lot with the whelp. Is it enough, though? And I don't have any life gain in my deck, by the way. Let's first see if Jeff can do anything. Nope, just passing the turn, so I'm going to drop to four. There's another mountain. Okay, that's good because I can use it. Pumping the whelp. Five points of damage. Look at that Jeff dropping to 15. Maybe I can still turn it around. I mean, I need three turns and I'm on four. So that should work. Okay, going to use the strip mine now to take care of the taiga. That makes sense. Oh, there's a chain lightning. Going to kill the whelp. No, going to kill me, of course. I thought going to kill the whelp. No, he's going to kill me. Yeah, that's the end of the road here, right? Yep, that's it. Oh, finding a wheel of fortune. Wouldn't be very good. And a, and a crow worm. Oh, no. Oh, the crow worm i really wanted to show you guys the crow worm but wasn't meant to be so we see here uh, jeff winning the bonus game the deck doing what it is supposed to do so really nice to see that uh, jeff and how often does that happen right you lose a match 2-0 and then you play a third game and all of a sudden in that third game the deck starts working uh, the cool thing is here talking about the deck starts working jeff actually made it all the way to the finals with this deck in the allied colors tournament so that is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, if you want to know more about the event, by the way, uh, there's a link in the description below to the tournament website where you can see all the other decks and also uh, the results if you're interested in that stuff. So um, yeah, it was a pretty cool tournament. Now, if you think, hey, I also want to join in into these tournaments, you actually can if you become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can become a supporter of the channel. Because the cool thing is when you become a patron, you're supporting me as a content creator. So you're helping me to continue making these videos for you. And at the same time, you can join in on the uh, online tournaments that I organize about you know, every two months I organize like a new event. Sometimes there's a longer gap, sometimes there's a shorter gap, but usually, you know, I organize tournaments every every two months or so. Uh, another cool perk, by the way, is if you support me as a protocol sorcerer or on a higher tier level, your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.